Well, hey, everybody. I'm Tania. Welcome back to the Breakfast Crew Podcast. I am missing my A Spoon Coon, which is my daughter. She uh, went to a friend house because it's the summer. And they have a pool in their backyard because this is Texas. So my husband's actually on the way to pick her up right now. But um, welcome back. Uh, it is ooh, June 14th. June 14th. It is 7 o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday here in Central Texas where I live with my daughter and my husband. My son doesn't live with us anymore. And um, my mother-in-law also live with us. And right now I have the little peoples here with us. So if I have to stop and like do something, it's because of them. Either way. Welcome back, everybody. Um, for those who are subscribed, thank you. For those who are new, welcome. Um, this is mainly a crochet podcast, but my daughter draws, so you'll see that sometime. I actually might let her do a quick little ditty so that she can get her face out to the world so everybody can see her. Um, I do knit. I do spin, but probably not as often as I knit or crochet. And what's my other obsession? Buying yarn, uh, going to carnivals, which I will tell y'all about. And I mean, that's about it. I love music though. Music is my passion. Music is my soul. It's my baby. Anyways, so I have um, one FO, I think. Yeah. One FO, two whips, three whips, because I lie. Um, and some possible things coming up adjacent to when I finish certain things. I'll talk about what I've been watching, what I've been doing, because I haven't podcast in like two weeks, maybe almost three. Last time my podcast was right before Memorial Day weekend and right before I went to Atlanta Carnival. So let's get into it. My 1FO is the Aphrodite sweater. Um, I know my lighting sucks. I'm sorry, y'all. It is seven o'clock in the afternoon and I, I don't know, whatever. Y'all here for the stuff, not for the lighting. Let me tell y'all about this sweater. This is a crochet top down pullover sweater. Here comes my husband and daughter. And, um, I'm going to close this door. And um, I love it. It worked up so quickly. It was ridiculous. I did do a little bit of delay because I started a crochet test for um, a, a top. So I got a little sidetracked. But I love this. Um, I used four and like a third of the fifth ball of yarn. This was made out of three Irish girls in a BFL. Colors called Pewter. And I said that like I know how to speak English. Because if I had spoke Geechee, I would have been like Pewter. Um, one thing I didn't do was realize the color change. So this is dark and this is lighter here's the ball oh and y'all can't see because it's like oh that's, that's pretty much it so i did not pay attention to the fact that this ball of yarn mm, i'm back sorry my sister-in-law is loud and so is my mother-in-law either way um i did not realize that this ball of yarn was lighter than the other four I had used. So I literally start from here to here. That's all I needed. And guess what? I don't care. It's my sweater made my way. And if you don't like it, 
turn your head, right? So this is gonna be probably one of my Rhinebeck sweaters. I'm so excited. It's called the Aphrodite Pullover. I'll insert a picture right here, if I did it right. Um, and that's my only at home. I did do something like, you see this? And then now uh, look at this. I somehow didn't decrease right. Uh, I don't know. So am I going to fix that? No. I mean, I tried it on before I blocked it. I'll try it on after I block it and see how I feel. I do like the way the right arm feels. It's like nice and it's not too snug. This left arm isn't too snug, but I can feel the difference. I'll say that. So that's my F1. Um, my current whips. Still working on that petunia tee. Uh, petu so it's called the petunia top, but I think she's changing it to the petunia tee because there's already a crochet top called petunia top. So I've been calling it the petunia tea anyway so the opportunity i'm using beachy breeze color um color in the shell seashell colorway and i actually y'all i swear to god so this is the two darker one remember i had two darker and two lighter this is the two darker and then the lighter is on the bottom and again it's mine i don't care um this is fingering weight. Uh, I'm almost out, but I think I'll have enough for my sleeves. So let me tell y'all what happened. So the pattern said you needed to be like 16 inches, like this part needed to be 16 inches. And the designer said that she got, oh, the designer is Tiger Eye Handmade. Duh. Um, she got five lace patterns before she started the arm. So this is one, two, three, four, five. Now five put me at 13 inches. I'm tall, right? So I was like, I need to go a little bit more. So I did one whole repeat, like one more of these. And then I got to the armhole or the arm shaping, the front, there's the back. And guess what? I almost ran out of yarn. I'm actually going to push this back a little bit. So, I had to rip all of the top part, front and back, back. I just went a frogging. And so, now I have enough yarn. Because I was going to dip into one of my... Oh, one of my mini schemes from... The fiber seed. This color is called Twin Tiffany. I was gonna say Twinkle, um, cause it reminds me of the Tiffany color. There it goes. Anyways, um, the Tiffany like blue box you get, and I really didn't want to break into that, cause I wanted to use it for something different. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. Rip right back because it's a test knit or a test crochet, like she needs to know the exact size, how much yarn, blah, 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 blah. So I rip back. Plus, I'm still like two weeks out before I have to be finish, finish. And all I have to do is my arms. So what I tell y'all? That means my wrist was hurting. <laughs> Yo, I crocheted so much last week, Wednesday and Thursday, cause I had took sick leave and I got all this bad boy done. Like, she been busy. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, I put it on already. I like the way it feels around my neck. And, I don't know, I like it. I did the whip stitch to see my two shoulders together. And it came out really good. Um, I sat in my car, actually, and did that this morning while I was waiting to go into work. Because this is my second to no this is my third to last day of work <laughs> i'm so excited anyways so i'm using a 3.75 hook 
for that and it's coming along um i also because i'm a glutton for punishment uh am testing another tea this is a tunisian crochet top though and i'm so stinking excited because i had to learn a whole new technique i had to learn how to tunisian crochet in the round i've never done that before i've only tunisian crochet back and forth flat so I wanted to do this yarn because we live in Texas and Saturday it was like 104 degrees on Worldwide Knit and Public Day. The hell. Um, and so I wanted cotton yarn. Why not? So I had cotton yarn in my stash. I had to frog it, but from a different project. But it's called Barocco Medina and it's a... Uh, 37% cotton, 30, 36% acrylic, 27% viscose. And I like it. It's a pretty color. Some red, some blues, some greens, right? So I did my swatch. Y'all, I swatched again. Who this girl is? This girl y'all don't swatch? Yes. Yes, she does. So um, this is my swatch. Um, I was supposed to get five, um, not five, I swatched with a five hook, and I was supposed to get um, 20 stitches to four inches, yeah, 20 stitches to four inches, and I was spot on. Now, this is listed as a DK weight, but y'all see how thin this yarn is. This is not DK. It's a light DK. So, I blocked, still got the same st stitch per inch. I'm gonna go with it. The designs are said it was okay, so I'm going with it. Here was my dilemma. I'm doing a size 52 inch bust, and that requires 1800 yards, and I only had like 11. <laughs> so I had to go to the store, and I swear I didn't wanna buy any more yarn. I'm going to run back, y'all. I'm trying not to buy any more yarn. So, um, I went to my local yarn store. Well, as local as possible. It's down in Georgetown, which is about 45 minutes away. And I went to, really. See you later. Come, little people. Say hi. Say hi to the world. Come on. Oh, this is little people. Joseph. Say hi, Joseph. Hi. Hi. And come here, little. This is little people Layla. Hi, little Layla. <laughs> and there's little people mama in the corner right there. Yeah. <laughs> if y'all follow me on Instagram, y'all seen these faces, right? Because y'all be on my Instagram. Y'all part Instagram famous? Maybe. Yeah. Okay. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Okay. Love you. Okay, bye. <laughs> she saw her in the camera. So, um, I needed a, I needed more yarn. I was going to get the same color, but the designer recommended a contrasting color. So, I got a completely contrast color. Here is what I got. So, this is going to be like my yoke section, and this is going to be the body. Y'all, this is going to be so cool. So if you've ever Tunisian crocheted around, if you ever knit in the round, it's kind of similar. So I need, or I needed, two hooks of either the same or equal, same size or, or equal, I mean same size or less value. <sighs> I was trying to be smart. This is my ginger, um... Ginger Tunisian crochet hook from Knitter's Pride. And this is just a Knitter's Pride Tunisian crochet hook. So, I, and they're interchangeable, duh. So, I put them on a 16-inch cord, just like you would if you're knitting. Now, here's the, the difference, right? You Tunisian crochet, like you would do flat. You Tunisian crochet, Tunisian crochet, Tunisian crochet. But then you flip it over... 
and then you do your return pass to close up the loops. So it gives you these, I mean, it gives you a circular object. I think I need to do something with this light. Hold on, let me see. Oh, yeah, just a little bit. But because it's blue, it's dark. Um, and so I'll, I'll probably insert a picture. So I'm using one ball to do the forward pass, and then I'm using the other ball to do the return pass. And I mean, it's it's different. Um, I'm excited I'm doing it. I'm learning a new skill, so that's always a good thing. Um, the designer, I test for her before. Her name is A.K. Lori of A.K. Lori Designs. She lives out in Arizona, New Mexico. Arizona and um, she's been doing a lot of testing crochet for her book that she got coming up she did say we can share that so that's why I'm letting y'all see it so that is I don't think that has a name yet but right now she's calling it the summer talk so it's the summer talk that's in my first ever whimsy stitches bag I got this when I was at the retreat for um, Into the Woe, which is in, which was in Tennessee, Crossville, Tennessee. Um, the dyer behind Unwind Yarn Company, she was putting on that um, retreat and it just became a little too much. And so COVID kind of drastically changed everything like for everybody and everywhere. And so she, she stopped and I was sad because I looked forward to that retreat. My friend Heather got me this crochet czar pin with the uh, vice president, Madam Vice President on it. And this is actually the first time it's been on a bag. I've had it sitting on my dresser. But, and y'all all know Whimsy Stitches. His name is Rick. He's such a sweetheart. I met him in person like four or five times. Um, he's going to be at DFW, so if y'all are coming to DFW Fiberfest here in uh, Irving in September, y'all will see him. Y'all will meet him. He is amazing. He makes amazing bags. This is actually my third. My third. I got three bags from him. I get attached. <laughs> so then, y'all know I got my uh, resident doctor graduating. And I was going to make them all hats. I scratched that. That was too much for my soul. But I did start making his F-bomb. Which, ironically enough, he dropped like five or six of them yesterday. And like three or four of them today. This is going to be a perfect gift. Um, here's the F-bomb pattern by... Something creations, circa creations. Girl, I don't know. I'm pretty sure her name on here somewhere. Oh, oh no. Mm -mm. A I R A V O creations. I'll put it down here. But it's the F bomb pattern, and this actually worked up pretty quickly. I was, I did, I started this yesterday, um, while watching working moms with my husband so I just have the um, the body so I stopped because I need to I don't know put hmm, I don't know if I want to put pellets at the bottom I have some fluff around here somewhere I'm looking like I'm about to pull it out for y'all but anyways um, I stopped because I want to put the fluff in it so I can start decreasing so I can close the bomb up and then I have some white yarn and red yarn so I can make the wick and the flame and then I have some red yarn so I'm going to crochet the F and then I'm going to sew it on maybe I should crochet the F now so I can sew it on while I still got the top open. <laughs> These things. <laughs> you think about when you're podcasting. Okay. 
Well, either way, I'm going to work on it tonight and tomorrow because the Hail and Farewell, which if you're not ARMY, you may not know what it is, but it's pretty much what it sounds like. Um, a Hail and Farewell is when you welcome in new people and then you say farewell to the old people. So we will be welcoming six, I think, six new um, family medicine residency students residents residents and then we will be saying goodbye to six of them and so um we're doing that on thursday and then they graduate on friday and then i out process on friday because friday is my last day uh, uh, do a dance do a dance do a dance anyways so that's that and that's that's pretty much all my whips. Oh no, I still got my muscle bra. I've been going ham on this muscle bra, y'all. Um, look, when y'all when y'all saw me, I was about right here. So I had this much done. Now I am closing and closing up. So this is yarn by Shipwreck Sheep. She's no longer dying, but my husband picked this out, and this is his Christmas gift. He doesn't watch the podcast. He won't know. Um, but I did tell him, do I have, I don't have more hair. Why am I picking stuff off my face? Anyways, um, so next will be probably my daughter's, or maybe my son's, because he don't live here, so it'd be easy to do. Let me see. Um. So she picked this. This is by, um, ooh, I know her name. I know her name. Hmm. I don't remember. Uh, but the yarn is called Hank Me Home Tonight. I got this from, uh, On the Lamb Yarn Shop in Grapevine, Texas. And every time I say Hank Me Home Tonight, I say, take me home tonight. I don't want to stop and stop and stop and Whatever. Anyways. And then my son yarn is going to be Savvy Schemes. And I got this cute little um, stitch marker to go with it. And this came from her um, Stranger Things collection. This is called the Upside Down. And my son likes blue, so... This has some blues, dark blue, light blue, a little bit of like green turquoise colors. So I'm pretty sure he'll like that. So I will probably wind up one or both of those. And if I can get the same gauge, which is like seven stitches, whatever, um, I'll knit it on the 3.75 needle. So those are my whips. What else are we about to be talking about? Hmm. We about to be talking about what y'all doing. Or rather, what project I got coming up next. Hmm. I don't know. I think I want... I know. I know. This is what I know. What do you know? I know I want to crochet my wardrobe this year. Y'all know crochet don't get enough attention. Y'all know crochet... Every time someone say crochet, they think Granny Square, 1977 retro blah 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 mm, i'm here to break that cycle i'm about to be crocheting up all the tops this year and i'm taking them all the rhyme back well yeah i'm taking them all the rhyme back and i about to let y'all see what um crochet is about i mean i'm not the only person doing that i'm sure but that's my mission this year i got all this free time since graduating I, got, I, I can do it. Why not? So, I think I want to do the captive, captive top? I think that's what it's called. It was a very popular crochet top last year. And it has, like, some lacy sections in it. It looks super flowy, depending on how big I make it and what yarn I use it in. And then, that's really all I got right now. I still want to make 
that boxy chevron. But I just don't feel like knitting right now. Except for the muscle burrow. But the muscle burrow literally is just knit, 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 knit. I just knit, 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 knit. So, hmm. We'll see. Either way, so what have y'all been up to? What have y'all been watching? What have y'all been making? Let me know. So I can, like, get some ideas and stuff. Uh, I finally got the second book of the Court of Thorns and Roses series. Y'all, I went on Facebook and I was like, can y'all please give me y'all library card number so I can find this book? Because my library wasn't carrying it. And then when I found it on my library, because I guess it became popular, I had to wait. And then I got a notification saying that, hey, your hold is, is ready for you to download and listen to. <sighs> Bet. So I downloaded it and I've been listening to it since hmm, the 4th of March. I'm pretty, it's a 23 hour book, y'all. I can only listen to one book at a time. Like I watch Miss Corey from I Rock Knits and she be listening to like three, four, five books, like kind of at a time. I can't do that. Maybe I can, I just choose not to. I'll try. Maybe I'll try listening to two books. We'll see how that goes. I've been watching Working Moms. Y'all, I swear that show is flipping hilarious. It's just hilarious. I'm in season six. I was trying to hold off, but we started watching, we as in me, started watching episode one at work. And my husband and I watched like episode two to like six last night. And I mean, it's 30 minutes. It goes by like 25 minutes. It goes by pretty quickly. But it's still hilarious. Let's see. What else Netflix got? Netflix got um, a four, four part, a four part documentary about the FDLS, which is the fundamentalist um Latter-day Saints, so FLDS, FLDS, sorry, FLDS, um, the, and that's the Mormon sect that kind of broke off from the, I guess, the bigger Mormon sect because they believed in polygamy and their belief was the more uh, wives you had, the higher your salvation would be, and so... You know, they had all these wives, which in turn had all these kids. And then we all know what happened in Dallas, Texas. Well, north of Dallas, Texas, a few years ago where the leader was captured and all this other stuff happened. Well, this told the story from like his father being the prophet to him being the prophet. Like, yo, he was devious. Like he had, and we knew like kids like kids, 14 year olds, 15 year olds were marrying like 30 year olds. We knew that, but to the point where they refused, they got kicked out and then not now they can't talk to none of their family, their moms, their dads. He kicked out men, boys first. He kicked out like, I don't know, 30, 40 something boys because they were marrying all the young girls to the older men. So now you had all these boys. What the hell are you going to do with all these boys? We're going to kick their ass out. Ooh, I said ass. I said it again. Sorry. Either way, we're going to kick them out. So now all these boys ain't got no place to go. And I don't know if they were able to talk to their parents because he kicked them out. They didn't do anything wrong. They were just there. But you had girls that didn't want to be married to certain people. And he kicked them out. And now their parents are like, I'm not talking to you. Your own flesh and blood. Like, that's crazy to me how you can sit there and make kids. Kids have babies. They're babies themselves. And then lie in the face and go, no, I, I didn't see any of that. But you helped deliver this baby. Like, this thing had me going crazy. I was like, you, you. I was trying not to pass judgment. Like, everybody's religion is different. And... I'm not here to judge you on your religion, my religion, or whatever. But somebody got to see that that is not cool. I'm not. Anyways, so I watched that. And then I watched a documentary on this 
freaking doctor, this fertility doctor in Indiana who was like masturbating. I wanted to say something else. He was masturbating in his office and then inseminating his own sperm into these women who couldn't have kids because their husband had low sperm counts. What? OMG. So the first kid was like, oh, you know, I knew I looked different, whatever. She took a 23andMe test. I think it was 23andMe. She did 23andMe and some lady popped up. Like she had a bunch of people pop up and this lady popped up and she knew she was a donor kid. Her mom never hid that from her. And she ended up finding like sibling number two, three, four, and five, right? And they were talking and it was like, what if it's the doctor? Like they were all joking, like, what if it's the doctor? The f it is the doctor. And they got to meet with the doctor. They got to meet with the doctor's own kids. And the doctor's kids was like, oh, he said it shouldn't be no more than 10. Here come child 14. What they do that at? So then they meet with the man and the doctor was like, oh, I only did it sparingly. So there should be no more than 15. Here come child 17. Pfft. 22, 38, 44, 64. By the time I finished watching that freaking documentary, y'all, he had 94 kids. 94. And they all live in a small town in Indiana. And one of the ladies was supposedly a good friend of his. Him and uh, her and the husband was a good friend. The hus the wife was like this neuroscientist who had like a degree in pediatric development or something. The chick was badass. And she had issues getting pregnant. Went to his office. He was like, yeah, let's let's go ahead and get y'all knocked up. And then she ended up having two. She had twins. And one of the twins had some fertility issues. No, I lied. One of the twins ended up going to him because he was an OBGYN who specialized in fertility. Went to him for her gynecological care. You telling me my daddy down in my area looking at this stuff, taking samples and stuff, and like he know he did that, but he ain't say nothing. Tight lip. So then they only got him, they only got him, y'all, on perjury to the state attorney. That was it. They said, oh, that's not illegal. Nothing about that's illegal. That story is called Our Father. Go watch it. I'm just saying. People crazy. Oh, and then I binge watched the third season of Stranger Things on Saturday after like knitting in public for a few hours. I was in Starbucks. I was very cool. I was not playing with that damn heat. I, pff, you got me messed up. No, nah, I said the black girl. I was not going to be sitting outside in 104 degree weather mm -mm, wrong person so I was in Starbucks and then I came home and I was like what am I going to do I'm going to sit down and watch Stranger Things because season 4 just came out so season 3 whew, I was like ah! yeah season 3 was amazing very good I definitely going to have to binge season 4 and I'm thinking when will I do this I need to do it on a day in a time frame where I ain't got nothing going on. And my next few weeks are pretty busy, so I probably won't binge it no time soon. But that's all I've been watching and listening to. I am back from uh, Carnival, Atlanta 2022. Atlanta, you don't owe me a damn thing. Y'all know what that means. That means I had a very good time. I was feeling myself y'all i had so much fun the inhibitions the worrying about what people think worrying about what people look like worrying about what people think you look like caribbean people don't care about that 
They want to see a good wine. They want to see a smile on your face. And they want to hear some soca. You can be the fluffiest girl on the stage day. Them don't care. And that's what I like about this community. The knitting community is almost just as welcoming. But the Caribbean community, it's there for me. Now, I don't know if y'all know, but I did find out later in life, but a few years ago, that my grandfather on my mom's side was part Jamaican. So I knew I had an island descent. Um, and then, of course, you know, everybody, when they hear me, they go, oh, you sound like you're from the island. I ain't from no island. I'm from Charleston. Charleston is a, Charleston is a peninsula. No island. But with that being said, I do have some island descent. And I'm looking into my father's mother background and dad background because supposedly they are also from another island, either from the island of Barbados, where Rihanna is from, or the islands of the Bahamas. I'm doing some research. I also might do a 23andMe to see where my genetic component lies at, but I had so much fun. As a matter of fact, that's my wings. The pink one is from Houston 2021. So last year, and then the bigger one is from Atlanta 2022. So I'm actually going to be what they call playing moss, which is short for masquerading. Um, we are called masqueraders. So I will be playing moss um, in Houston, 4th of July weekend. So I'll get to weigh those wings again. So it was cheaper this time around. But I had so much fun. We went to so many fits. That's a party. Um, we did a lot of um, water uh, paint fits. Um, the first Friday or that Friday of before Memorial Day weekend, we did what they call a juve. Juve in French, I believe. And if I don't get this right, I'll put it down here. means like sunrise. So we were up at the butt crack of dawn. Like... We got in at 11.30. We got to the Airbnb at almost 1 o'clock because we had to find a car and do all this craziness. I still had to cut my shirt for Juve that started at 6 o'clock in the morning. I only got two hours of sleep. I went to sleep at 2, got up at 4, left the Airbnb at 5, got to Juve on time. And guess what? We didn't start till 7.30. <laughs> I was so mad. I was like, oh my God, I'm so tired. But when I, when we started, I don't, I don't know what time it was. I heard music. I saw paint. I had oil. Jab Jab was there. Jab Jab is a, um, a devil-like spirit um, that most islands have a figure. Um, so I'm... I'll probably insert some clips. Like, if y'all follow me on Instagram, y'all probably saw my Instagram stories or Snapchat. So, y'all probably saw my Snap stories. And so, y'all already know what I'm talking about. But for those who don't, I'm going to insert a few videos as I talk so that y'all can see what we were doing. But that was Friday. And then Saturday, we had Carnival, which was almost, I don't know, maybe four or five mile walk where we had a big old 18 wheeler with huge concert speakers and like world famous soca DJs, Caribbean DJs playing music. And we were what they call chipping. It's a way of walking and dancing down the street. And we just had a ball. It was, I think it was in the upper nineties. Humidity was like stupid high. I got a tan. I still got my tan. I would show y'all, but I don't want you two to think I'm flashing y'all. So just believe me, I got a tan. <laughs> and that was Saturday. And once we finished that, we went to a party that night. And then Sunday, we had three parties to go to. One was a pool party. One was another paint and wet party. And uh, the other one was... Oh, God. What was the other one? 
oh, this is another outdoor party. And it was so much fun. And then Monday, we went to something called Triple S Red. And it's a series of um, color, um, color paint party. So in Miami, they have Triple S Blue. So you have blue paint. In Atlanta, you got Triple S Red. So you have red paint. Um, they do one in New York as well, and it's a little different, but I don't know what that one is. Um, and we just had, I had red paint all over me. Both me and my homegirl understood the assignment. Most of the people understood the assignment. We came dressed in red outfits, and we came ready to party. It rained on us, and when that rain came down, I got cleaned. Like, it was magical. I got cleaned and then we got we got painted again so that oh god that party lasted a long time that party started I think around two or three I think we left around seven and they were still partying when we left so that that was that was a blast I will be doing it again in July and I'll probably tell y'all about that then but um, I think that is it. I have nothing else to show. I have nothing else to talk about. Oh, but on that note, um, we're gonna be out. Ooh, Harvest is usually here to give us a um a joke of the day, but I heard her come in. She must not want to come in here, so it's okay. But uh, do what you do, be who you are, and don't let nobody tell you any different. Peace out, Girl Scout.